It's that feeling when the energy in the room shifts, when the air gets sucked out of a moment and everything starts to feel wrong. It's the instinct between fight or flight when your brain is trying to make sense of what it's seeing. It's when your heart starts 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 pounding. Welcome to Heart Starts Pounding. I'm your host, Kaylin Moore. It probably comes as no surprise to you, but the ground under your feet right now is millions of years old. Though thousands of people have stood in the spot you're standing, we have limited ways to know what those people were doing. Much of our history beyond the last few hundred years has been wiped clean. We're left with few clues, incomplete timelines, and sometimes a poor cultural understanding to try and piece together the puzzle of the past. But, as we've talked about before on this podcast, sometimes the past won't let you forget it. Just because you don't remember something doesn't mean the echoes of history haven't tethered themselves to the location, pulling you in directions beyond your control, beckoning you to the woods. Today, We're hearing from someone whose ghostly sighting might be the result of something we may never understand. Okay, Leo, to get started, I want to ask you a question. How haunted is Connecticut? I say this every time I tell somebody um, I'm from Connecticut. I always tell them the entire state of Connecticut is haunted actively haunted why do you think that is i don't know if it's like the land or the cult like connecticut culture i guess but i think when you have a state that's as old as connecticut like there's going to be a higher chance of spirits attaching themselves just because it's been around for so long. So there's much more time for like ghosts to develop. Yeah. There's just so much that's happened and there's a lot of conflict that's happened on the land too. Leo's right. Connecticut feels extremely haunted. So when Jack, a behavioral health tech for the Navy who lives in Groton, Connecticut, reached out to me saying he was experiencing some paranormal things in his house, I knew I had to have him tell his story. Yeah, this is a this is a house that is provided by the military by a private company. Housing provided by the military. Can I go ahead and say you're opening the door for definitely a potential haunting? So Jack lives in military housing on the naval base in Groton with his wife Alex. I was there for uh, about three months alone. Okay. Uh, and then she's been there about nine months. The room that is actually now the room that my wife and I um, sleep in was a room that I felt like I could not go into. I do not know how to really explain that, um, but it was at nighttime a room that I would avoid. Um, It was a room that I would just slam the door shut on um oftentimes um it just felt as though there was i felt like something was looking at me out of that room so you decided to move it uh yeah so i actually i did ask him about that and he said it was a logistical issue of when alex moved in it just made more sense for them to both be in the bigger bedroom like like, i get it i totally understand i would also pick the larger room but it's like for sure. If I was if I was on the home buying market and I, a real estate agent and like a realtor was like, hey, this is the master bedroom. It has a walk-in closet. Someone was murdered here. I'd be like, that is where all my clothes are going. That's fine. I'd be like, that's unfortunate. It's 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 got slant, slanted ceilings, yeah. though, so I kind of <laughs> need to be in there. But when Jack moved into the master bedroom, it was no longer just a bad feeling. And... The first things that started happening was when uh, Alex joined me in the household. At night, that closet door would open. And that's something that is a constant now, even, where Mm. we 
will go to sleep and we always close the closet door uh, because we have dogs and one of the dogs loves to tear pillows apart. We always put pillows in the closet. We always take them out of the closet and we always make a point of closing the door all the way. And it's a slider. Two nights ago, uh, Alex woke up and saw it slide open. Two nights ago from when this was recorded, she woke up yeah. and saw... That's so recent. Yeah. That's yeah. like the most recent story we've had. No, definitely. And from what I gathered from Jack too, this is like kind of a constant in the house. Like there's always stuff happening since he moved in, even to this day. But it sounds like from what he said... Stuff like that didn't start happening until Alex moved in. Stuff like that didn't start happening until he moved into the bedroom with the bad stuff happening. Yeah. So I'm going to play you the next part of Jack's story where he brings up a very specific incident that was kind of unlike anything I had heard before. Um, something that happened that was very personal to me was um, shortly after moving here, I had lost a friend uh, very suddenly. Um, somebody who I cared about very deeply. Um, uh, I had found out two days after they had passed on that they, that they were deceased. Um, and, um, about the next day or so I walked into, actually, no, it was that night. Um, I walked into that front room where all the activity happens and I looked at, I was stuck I was stuck in place. Uh, I was moving. I was walking across the room. And then all of a sudden, I was stuck dead in my tracks. And I remember seeing something out of the corner of my eyes. And I looked at the sliding door in the back of the house. And there was a clear reflection of, of my friend. Um, I saw it. Alex saw it. Um, now... Being a behavioral health technician, all of the practical things that I can think of and objectively outside looking in, I was dealing with a ton of grief. You know, anything could have elicited that, that image. However, Alex was not close with my friend Jess. She just wasn't. Um, we had a very complicated relationship and I went through lengths on to, on how to disprove, disprove what had happened. I would say to her, how, how tall was the reflection? And she would point exactly where I saw, you know, how wide was the reflection? You know, like what color was, was the hair of this reflection? Like, you know, like, <laughs> please don't like. What was the shape of the face? What was, you know, and absolute like kind of like a, like a sketch artist would be, would do with, um, the, you know, a victim of a crime. I asked all of the questions that that, that person would. Yeah. And she just, everything matched. It was, it was Jess. And, um, that was probably, it was spooky, but not creepy. And I actually found it extremely, um, I know it sounds weird, but comforting. Yeah. Because, like I said, it was a close friend of mine um, that I had a really complicated relationship with. I can't, I can't say, I can't stress that enough. Yeah. Um, and I am somebody in the medical field. I have this innate need to be there for my friends specifically if they're in a really bad way when i saw her in the door in this glass door it would it felt like i don't know it felt like it's okay i had this resounding feeling like it's okay i'm still kind of here but i'm not at the same time and yeah i found i found a way i found an avenue and the first thing i thought was <laughs> the swamp i have about a million thoughts running through my head right now yeah first 
first, how terrifying to be like, what is that in the corner of my eye? And then turn around and see the reflection of your friend who has just passed. Yeah. And like he said, he's a behavioral health sci- tech. Health tech. He's going to try and explain it away. The fact that his wife saw the exact same thing and was able to explain it in clear detail. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times with stories like these, when in your heart, you know it's real and it happened, you really do try and explain it away somehow. Yeah. Also, the swamp. What swamp? So I had the same exact question when he got to this part of the story. I remember earlier when I asked you why you think Connecticut is so haunted and your first response was the land. Yeah. Well, what if I told you that Jack's house, the naval housing units in general, and the naval base in Groton are all built on this ancient indigenous, highly mysterious piece of land called Gunjawamp. No one knows where it's from. No one really knows what it's for. We don't even really know where the word Gundrawamp comes from. I'm intrigued and I also believe you 100%. More after the break. So before I dive into what's going on, Let me describe to you what Gunjawamp, the land, actually is. Gunjawamp is a 55-acre piece of land in Groton, Connecticut. Shockingly, this piece of land is owned by the YMCA. At this time, it's unclear if they plan on building a gym on the swamp, or if the YMCA is just on a crusade to buy up haunted land. Something else interesting to note is no one really knows where the word Gunjawamp comes from. Everyone just kind of assumed it was a Pequot word, which was the indigenous tribe in the area. And then finally someone asked a Pequot person what it meant, and they were like, that's not Pequot. (laughs) Gunjawamp contains a swamp area, a cliff, and a large woods. But inside the woods, there's a series of stone structures whose history is highly debated. Some of these stone structures are very colonial in nature, and it does appear that part of this land is an abandoned sheep farm from the mid-1600s to mid-1700s. Why are there so many abandoned farms, abandoned cities, abandoned just settlements in Connecticut? I know. What made people up and leave every time they like built a home yeah, somewhere? Yeah, literally just dip out. There's animal pens and foundations of houses that once were all made of stone. But there's a lot there that seems to predate colonial era and is also not aligned with what the Pequot tribe was doing at the time. When the colonists got to the site, there was already stone walls there, but Pequots mainly used wood to build their stockade walls. So if neither group built them, who did? One theory is that Celtic monks traveled to New England in 500 AD to escape religious persecution and may have set up shop in the area. There was also indigenous stories about the land being sacred because some of the stone structures there marked the rising and setting of the sun and other celestial events. I think this does sound like Stonehenge. I was like the first thing that came to my mind. Also, it would make sense if Celtic monks came over to Connecticut to build something like Stonehenge in order to watch the or to track the movement of the sun. Leo, I have a real question for you. What? Have you ever heard the term Celtic monks before this very moment? No. Nope. <laughs> no, I so have this not. this is you fully guessing what fully they were guessing. up to. Gel- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Celtic. You were like, no, dude, that makes sense. They were definitely coming to Connecticut to set up their weird calendars. And I'm like, do you know who they are? No. Do you I, know what they were doing? Mm, no, but my <laughs> brain is going Celtic. I know that word. <laughs> Am I wrong? Where are they from? <laughs> One of those stone structures is these two circles that are made from stones that are about the size of bricks. One smaller circle inside of a larger circle. Looking at an image of it harkens back to Stonehenge and it makes me think of a term called retroactive amnesia. 
that term basically means that, at the time, that structure would have been obvious to someone looking at it. But now, its strange arrangement leaves us only with more questions. Initially, it was believed that this was once a mill for extracting tannins for tanning animal hides. But there are a few bizarre things about this structure that I want to tell you about. For one, one of the stones has a petroglyph of an eagle on it. And that's something that cannot be traced to the colonists or the Pequots. Some people believe that this strengthens the Celtic monks theory, as they use the symbol of an eagle to represent St. John. Where are they from? If they're, <laughs> let's, let's go over the facts. Celtic. That's one place. <laughs> Facing religious persecution. We know where that happened in Europe. It makes sense. Where are the... Ireland. Yeah. We're Irish. How do you not know the word That's Celtic? That's what I'm saying. Another strange thing is that the stones were carbon dated in 1991, and it showed that the structure was over a thousand years old. Obviously, that was well before the colonists. The stone structure also lines up with the equinoxes, so it seems to also function as some sort of calendar. Colonists at the time had actual calendars and wouldn't have needed to celestially align a tanning mill. That structure is also not the only one that would have indicated to whoever was there what the heavenly bodies were doing. There's also a small room built into a hill that has stone walls called chamber number one. Think of a hobbit house. And what is the one day a year where the sun shines through the small window of the chamber to illuminate the wall behind it? the vernal equinox. On top of all this, Jack mentioned getting a weird feeling whenever he was near the woods. You know, something I talked to you about the other day was this aspect of there's always something in the woods telling me or inviting me into the woods. Yeah, that feeling of like being beckoned to the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Are the woods on the other side of the house of the swamp or are the woods in the swamp connected? The woods in the swamp are connected. Okay, so it's that general area that you feel like a beckoning towards. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is just a general saying to everybody out there. If you are being invited into the woods by something into the woods, no, you are not. Stay out of there. I will there. say nothing good has ever come from being beckoned to the woods. If Yeah. Literally, if you're standing in front of the wo woods and you have this strong feeling, maybe I should go in there. Maybe you should not. Yeah. And you, you should go the other direction. Absolutely. Th no matter what part of like America or the world you are in, if you are being beckoned to the woods it's time to go. If you're on the Isle of Celts in the middle of Scotland and you get beckoned into those woods, you better run. It made sense <laughs> in my mind, okay? Um, and what does that feel like when, like when you're standing there and you get this feeling? Like what exactly, like even if you can't put words to it, like what's your best guess on what that feels like? Oh, I can definitely put words to it. Um, it is this feel. So first, firstly, it is, it is definitely a thought. Like, it catches my attention. I'm stopped in my tracks. I have to look into the woods. And I'm, I, it's like I lean forward, looking into the, into the darkest part of the woods. And what happens next is it feels like there's a leash attached to my sternum pulling me in. But wow. I definitely have control over my body. It's not like a tractor beam. Yeah. It's definitely, but it's definitely attached to my like heart chakra, you know, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Does it feel nefarious at all or is it like comforting it feels i wouldn't say nefarious i would say if if there's any fear attached to it it's what i'm bringing to it yeah it's more or less it's like it's like seeing a dog and wondering if you're about to get bit 
Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's how I would put it. I would put it that, you know, it's unknown. The more I read about these woods, the more supernatural they seemed to become. There's a series of stones in the woods that are standing all in a row. It almost looks like someone made makeshift headstones and put them one in front of the other. One theory states that the Pequots would line up these stones when they went off to war and then take them down when they got back, suggesting many were lost in one battle. There's another theory that these specific stones were used for curses. And then there's the cliff in Gunjawamp, which has the nickname the Cliff of Tears. So many visitors while on tours burst into tears when getting to this cliff that they gave it the nickname. And it's not that people were taken with the beauty of the cliff and were reduced to tears. People mentioned getting filled with an overwhelmingly negative emotion upon approaching the cliff and find themselves inexplicably crying. The fact that people now still are feeling that energy, feeling that those waves of emotion. Mm-hmm. Obviously, something is still tied. Yeah, I, I, the crying reminds me of energy, too, because I think, like, strong energy can bring, like, strong um, emotional responses. At least, like, I have a friend who... I have a friend who did Reiki, and one thing she said is the first time she ever did it, because it's energy healing, she burst into tears afterwards because it's a very... It, I mean, it's a very powerful thing that's being done to someone yeah it's the same thing when you you know when you're in a house and you can feel something is off you feel that something is off you feel unsafe you feel scared if you walk onto land where something terrible has happened you're going to feel that sadness that negative emotion with an area as supercharged as this i asked jack if it was just his house that was experiencing the hauntings or if other members of the military living in those houses noticed anything as well so um a new guy just came to our clinic and he turned to our supervisor and said hey you know how our stairs are extremely loud and he goes yeah and he was like do you ever hear people walking up and down your stairs at night now he doesn't know about our stories at all we haven't brought him into the fold. Um, and it, he asked this question this morning, as a matter of a fact. He talked to our supervisor. I was there in the room. I saw it happen where he's just like, have you heard people walking up and down your stairs at night? And my supervisor turns to him and goes, yeah. Every single night, I hear someone walking up and down my stairs. It's like... Oh, my God. Yeah. And I imagine these are like military men. They're like yeah. probably skeptical, I would imagine. Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> it's, <laughs> we, I mean, it's... And, and look at it this way as well. Not only are we skeptical, we are also behavioral health technicians. I have a, I have a, I have a patient who is actively... I actually have a few patients who are actively delusional. I have to take I have to take everything he says and push it through a filter of like okay now is this is this something he's actually seeing is this something he's actually hearing or is this something that his brain is telling him is there I have to be yeah. skeptic at work through through work So all of the guy, all of the military members in, in that area experience hauntings. I'm I'm literally speechless. I, I yeah, I had like goosebumps the first time he told me because it's just so the fact too that they all acknowledge it and they're all like, yeah, it's ghosts, friggin' ghosts. The the people working in the like sector that have to signify like this is a delusion this is real like the yeah. behavioral stuff are like yeah it's a ghost that's yeah like, mind-blowing to me oh my official diagnosis is ghosts yeah yeah <laughs> where it's like like he said he has to push it through a filter after that filter he's like yeah it's ghosts what 
Yeah. A- a- he's saying it so casually and this is actively happening. It's yeah. not like, oh, this was a few. I feel like a lot of our stories are like, this was years ago. This yeah. was months ago. This is like, yeah, this morning this happened. You, yeah. Why are you not having a bigger reaction? <laughs> I feel like if I heard that, I'd be like, what? Uh, okay. But it's happening to everyone. It's kind of something that they all live with, which is terrifying they've just accepted it they've They're just like, accepted it yeah yeah it's ghosts it's ghosts man so yes maybe they've all just accepted the fact that the homes they occupy are haunted potentially as a result of living on cursed land fine but jack mentioned that though this is something he's learned to live with he thinks something about our conversation may have disturbed whatever's going on in his house because of our phone conversation, I think we did something to the house. Since our conversation, it has heightened. Like I said, two nights ago, the door, the closet door, like opened and closed, which is nothing we've dealt with. That's very like tame, but we've always seen it open, but never like open and close like multiple times. Um, we've we woke up one morning and all the lights were on which is just like and that was actually the day after we had our conversation it was just like hey yeah to acknowledge we're here and we heard you it was kind of like the the message that i got yeah Um, that night um also our kitchen chairs were moved around um the the fridge door was opened and closed very distinct noises like kind of just that noise of somebody uh, doing dishes or or uh, cooking in in the kitchen it's always in that front room area uh, my chair was moved around which was the chair that that I was talking to you in when we were when we were having our phone conversation that was actively moved around my ottoman was moved halfway across the room um yeah it's it's definitely gotten uh it's definitely heightened i can't tell you what was happening in those woods all those years ago and leo can't even tell you who was in america at the time all we can go by is what a few archaeologists have looked into and what jack a self-proclaimed skeptic has experienced nearly every day since moving into the house But the next time you go outside, look down at your feet, at the land you're standing on. What do you really know about it? And what won't it let you forget? This has been Heart Starts Pounding. I'm your host, Kaylin Moore. Have a heart pounding story you'd like to share on the podcast? Email heartstartspounding at gmail.com and make sure to follow the podcast on Instagram at heartstartspounding. Till next time. Ooh.